All right, hey, hey, it's Mega here, and so this is gonna be my coolant, uh, my inverter coolant change vlog for this 2010 Toyota Prius. All right, this is my mom's 2010 Toyota Prius. This is a third gen Prius, and it's time to go change the coolant on it. All right, so in the uh, in, in the little um, warranty booklet, it has the uh, the service intervals for everything, all the work that you got to do on the car. All right, and so at a hundred thousand miles. You've got to change the inverter, uh, the inverter and the engine coolant, all right? And this one has like 112, so it's like overdue, <laughs> okay? So here's the stuff that you're gonna need. I already, so I already did the engine coolant yesterday, all right? I, sh I shot a video about it, so if you want to know how to do that, check that video out. I'll put a link at the end of the video, all right? Uh, but this video is specifically gonna focus on the inverter cooling system, all right? Your your vehicle has two cooling systems, one for the engine and one for the hybrid inverter system, right? The hybrid, the electric, electronics, okay? <laughs> so here's the stuff that you're gonna need to do it. You're gonna need, uh, I think you're gonna need like a gallon of Toyota Super Long Life coolant, all right? You can buy this at your local Toyota dealer. Um, some auto parts stores may carry it, all right? Kind of like, I think Napa carries it, carries it, I'm not sure. But I got this from my local Toyota dealer, okay? Um, I have some extra here. All right. Uh, what they told me at the dealer is if you're if you wind up a little bit short, you can add a little distilled water, right? But it, it says here don't add water. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is already pre-diluted, so you just pour it in. Okay. Um, a lot of coolants they're not diluted, and you're gonna have to buy like a distilled water and then mix it and everything. You don't have to do that with this. You just pour it in. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. Okay. I think these are roughly twenty. I got this for about twenty dollars from the dealer, and I bought two of them, so that's like forty bucks. Okay, hopefully that's enough to fill it up. We'll, we'll find out, <laughs> okay? You're gonna need something to catch the coolant, all right? A drain pan and uh, like a funnel to when we add the coolant, okay? And then you're gonna need a 10 millimeter um, socket, all right? Or a 10 millimeter Allen wrench type of thing. Uh, I would highly suggest you get something like this, all right? It's a 10 millimeter um, Allen head socket thing, all right? This one's a half inch one. I, they do make them in 3 eighths also. Um, I don't think it, it, we also and you also need a torque wrench, right? So I got a ratchet for that and a breaker bar. So so I'll have no problem taking this drain plug off. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then and then uh, I've got a torque adapter here. All right. Now you need a, some kind of torque wrench or something. So when we put that drain plug back, you you torque it to the right specification. Okay. And then uh, and then I've got the service manual printed out right here. Right. It's pretty easy. Um, I, I never did it on the second gen. I paid someone to do it, and I paid like somebody like four hundred dollars to do it. But it's very easy on the third gen. You don't even need to bleed anything. You just pretty much you drain it, you fill it, you turn it on, and and then uh, and then you and then you fill it up again, and you turn it on. Yeah, that's that's pretty much the whole process. So we'll see how. I think we can probably get this done in an hour. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first thing you got to do is you got to get your car on some stands. All right. So. Um, use a, a jack stand and uh, a jack and jack stands to get it up. All right. Um, you need to be able to get to the front of the vehicle. In my case, I'm using ramps. All right. I have ramps that the Prius can actually drive up, so um, that that helps. I don't have to do any jacking or anything. I just drive up. On, okay. And then um, and yeah. So and then I think we're gonna need you're gonna need a screwdriver to remove the lower cover. For um, for the engine coolant, I didn't have to remove the cover at all. But this one we do because the drain plug is covered behind it. All right, you can you I can see the plug, but I can't get a tool to it. All right, and if you took the plug out, it would it would just drain onto the cover and it just make a mess everywhere. So it's better just to take that cover off. So um, I think you're going to need some kind of 10 millimeter socket and a screwdriver to take the clips out so we can take the undercover off. Okay. So, so that's the next part. We're going to take the undercover off. All right, so vehicle's in the air. I've got a chalk on it just in case it rolls forward because we're I'm on an incline here. All right, and you're going to want to pop your pop the uh, pop the hood. All right. All right. Okay. Here you go. Uh, so we're going to remove this cover because we got to get to the uh, that bolt right there. All right. Is there's a bolt there somewhere. Okay. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah, so this is the hole to put the jack underneath the car, all right? So I guess if you go over there, that's the that's the plug for the uh okay, that's the plug for the um what you call it? Um 
that's the plug for the uh, hybrid inverter cooling system okay uh, so before we do that we got to take this cover off right because as you can see it's covering it so there's no no way we can get access to it all right easily anyways so we're going to remove the cover um it's a you got to take these 10 millimeter bolts out there's a couple i think there's like four or five or something all right and then there's uh there's some covers in the back as you can see some of the covers are missing on this car so um yeah it's spin around a little bit all right there's a zip tie holding it here um, i'm going to try to keep that on so i don't have to put that back <laughs> okay and there's a clip under there all right so you're going to need to use some kind of pry bar or um or like a, a screwdriver to get that out okay okay also it's a good idea to wear safety glasses if you're working underneath the car <laughs> okay all right i'm going to go ahead and remove the, those covers that i just showed you Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those covers. The bolts for the cover. Makes quick work of it with the impact gun. I'd have to take the zip ties off, guys. <laughs> okay, I snipped the zip ties, guys. <laughs> there it goes. Not a pain in the booty. Okay, I got two zip ties on this side. Oh, there's like three zip ties. Can I do it from here already? No, I'm going to take the clip off. Oh, what a pain in the butt. <laughs> Alright. I can't get that, I can't get that back one out, guys. So I'm just going to... This cover is so messed up, man. This is not a, a good example of a stock uh, Prius. <laughs> so to say. It's a pretty beat up one. A thousand miles would do that. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of rotate it a little bit so I can get it out of the way. So if I take that clip out, I won't be able to get it back in. Okay. I'm gonna put my drain pan right here. So the problem was uh, I can't get that clip out in the back, and and I broke the 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 head off. So so I would have to get like a pliers or something and dig it out or something. I'm just gonna leave it. We're just gonna do it like this. Okay. Um, so I think what we're looking for is right here. All right, guys, you'll see this bar here. All right, like a, a crossbar. And right next to it is the, uh, the drain plug. Okay. It should take a 10 millimeter. Okay. So, uh, the first step was remove the front spoiler cover. No, don't do that. Um, um, remove the engine under cover. That's what we just did. All right. I tried to do it with the best of my ability <laughs> And then drain the coolant. All right, so you got to remove the reserve tank cap All right, so before that I'm going to clean it so no dirt gets in there. It looks pretty nasty Okay, I'm gonna clean this cap so I could at least read the labels, right? I'm gonna clean around this area here. So when we open it the dirt won't get in there. That's what we don't want All right. Okay, my, my coolant, my engine one was clean, but this one is not, so <laughs> I'm cleaning it. Okay, uh, I'm gonna spray it with some water. Get as much of that dirt out as possible. And also you want it, you want the, the tank is clear, you want it to be clear. I mean, you want it to be clean so you can see the coolant in it, right? It's all dirty and yucky looking and you won't be able to see what the level of the current the coolant so right now we're at L right now okay so this actually needed some inverter coolant for this so. okay I'm just gonna keep on cleaning that all right it looks brand new okay so we're gonna remove the cover all right I think you gotta uh, you just yeah you just twist it counterclockwise should come out eventually Okay, make sure it's not hot. <laughs> you might want to clean some of this, those those kind of particles on there when we put it back. All right, yeah, probably 
clean up around here too. All right, try not to get any dirt in there. Okay. All right, so that that was the first step. That was the next step. All right, um, remove the reserve tank cap, all right? Then use a hexagon wrench, 10 millimeters. Remove the drain plug indicated in the illustration and drain the coolant, all right? So we're ready to drain the coolant. We're gonna use these guys I showed you earlier, okay? 10 millimeter Allen wrench socket, all right? You can probably use an Allen, uh, 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 Allen wrench, all right? But I wouldn't. <laughs> I would use, this is the proper tool you want. All right, because like I said, we got to torque it later and you can't torque it with the Allen wrench. You'll have to guess. Okay. So how do I know that's the right one? If this 10 millimeter fits in there, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's just, we'll wipe it clean after. Okay. Yeah, it took quite a bit of force to get it open. Okay, and I think... And then you're supposed to replace the the the, ga the gasket after, but I'm just gonna reuse it. Okay, here it goes. Ooh, mess. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up because I've got this stupid cover still on there. Try not, I'm trying not to make a mess, guys. <laughs> All right, just let it drain. See, if I put a box underneath it, it'll be level. Okay, as long as it's an overflow. Looks like it. There's not a whole lot that came out. I mean, it took like maybe a minute to drain it. All right, so we'll let that sit for a few more minutes, and then uh, and then we'll plug it back up, and then we'll fill her back up. <laughs> it was that easy, guys. All right, so get make sure you got your drain plug, and it's got the little gasket on it still. All right. Um, there's a little thing in the center here too. What is this? Okay, make sure it's still got the gasket on it, all right? All right. We'll come back and let's let it drain for five more minutes and then uh, then we'll plug it back okay, up. it's been a few minutes. I'm gonna go clean the drain plug, all right? It should pretty be pretty clean already, all right? Let's make sure the threads are nice and clean. You didn't get any dirt on it. I'm gonna clean the gasket. Clean the plug, the head part. Okay, that looks good. And then we're gonna wipe this area. It's just been kind of just trickling out of there, but I think that's good. Okay, make sure it's nice and clean. We'll wipe it one more time and then put the plug back in. All right, we'll stick the stick the rag in there a little bit and then put back in. Okay. Okay. All I'm gonna do is make sure that this thing, the gasket is centered, which it is. Okay. And then so you want to torque it to 29 foot pounds, all right? I will put the specs in the video also. Okay. So you can see here, 29 foot pounds. I got my torque wrench set to. All right. Okay, 29 foot-pounds, all done. All right, I'm gonna take my tray here, out. Okay, so now that we're done down here, um, you can go ahead and uh, put the cover back on because uh, we don't need to work under here anymore. We're done.
Okay, so the next thing to do is add coolant. All right, so the cap is still off. Um, go ahead and get your funnel, put it in the filler hole, and start filling it up with coolant to, to when it gets to the F line, all right? So if you look here, there's an F right here. See, there's an L and an F line. You gotta fill it to the full line, all right? So all right, by the do. way, that's how much coolant we drained out, all right? Not a whole lot. Is there a measurement? Oh, there is a measurement. Two quarts, all right? That's what it says. So we drained out two quarts. That seems about right. We were actually a little low on coolant, so we should be just shy of two quarts, and it is, okay? So perfect. Okay, right. we're going to go ahead and start adding coolant. All right, this one's already been opened, so I'm just going to dump it all in there. And it's just to slowly pour it, all right? <laughs> just pour it in there super duper fast. Okay, it's at the full. I'm gonna wait a bit to let it, so you can see the bubbles coming out of it and everything. Yeah. <laughs> the level will start going down. Okay, just try to keep it at F. All right, maybe fill it up above F a little bit. So you can see you can see the bubbles coming down it right here, right? You what you could do is squeeze these hoses for the inverter, all right? Take a look here. Take a gander here. All right, so there's a hose coming out of the um, the reservoir here. You can squeeze it, all right, and that should help the coolant go down, all right, and the bubbles to get out of the system. Okay, so I'm gonna let it sit there for a few minutes and then we'll see what the level is and then uh, we'll go fire up the car, all right? <laughs> all right. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, um, the coolant to drain down there, I'm gonna go clean the cap, all right? So when we put it back on, it's nice and clean, all right? There's these kind of like crystallized particles stuck to it. I'm just gonna wipe it off as best as I can, all right? It's nice and clean when we put it back on. All right, there's also, I think there's a, yeah, there's an O-ring right here. Make sure that's not damaged, okay? It's like, a, it's pretty much a radiator cap is what it is. So it opens like at a certain pressure. Okay, clean, ready to put back on. Okay, it looks like it's kind of stabilized. I'm gonna go squeeze these hoses again. There's another hose on the bottom that we could squeeze. Okay. Okay, check this out. So there's hoses right here. There's a hose that goes to the top of the reservoir. And there's a hose at the bottom right here, okay? If you follow it, probably right here is a good place to squeeze it, okay? Okay, that'll help get all the air out of it. I think it's fine. Oh, it's actually below F now. Um, yeah, let me fill it back up to F. Okay, now it looks like the uh, the coolant level has stabilized. 
now we're going to have to turn the vehicle on and when we turn the vehicle on it's going to turn the the water pump on and it's going to cycle the coolant all right and then hopefully it'll get all the bubbles out of this okay system. so the next step here is if, if you have tech stream all right you can you can tell it to turn the water pump on but i don't have it all right so when not using tech stream it's even it's even easier than than when you're using a tech stream you just turn the vehicle on to ready all right that means it's on and ready to drive turn the power switch and then you and then you turn the power switch off and you add coolant to the F line when the coolant level drops as the air bleeds, okay? And it says to repeat steps one and two until there's no more air. So we just keep on doing that, okay? So here we go. Okay. We're at F. Okay? I got the key in my pocket. <laughs> here. Alright, we're gonna go inside. Gonna turn the vehicle on to where it says ready. See, it says ready. Okay, turn everything off. Okay, that should turn the water pump on. And maybe you saw it suck all the cooling out. Okay, <laughs> it's all gone. All right, guys. <laughs> so now turn it off. All okay, right, turned it off. Now we're gonna refill the coolant. It literally just sucked all that coolant out, man. All right. Okay, I'm gonna, we'll do this one more time for you guys and I'm just gonna speed it up. Fill it up until it gets back to the F line. Make sure there's no water leaking from the bottom of your, bottom of your car too. That means you didn't put the plug in right. cover this so if I kick it or something it doesn't make okay. a mess. Now we're gonna go back inside. Uh, hey you know what? Uh, you guys can watch the coolant go down. How about that? I'm gonna turn it on all right you guys are gonna see the coolant go down. Let's see how fast it goes. Okay there it is. See it going down. Yeah, I would wait till it stops stops going down. Okay, yeah, the, the gasoline engine will probably turn on, alright? Okay, it looks like it's uh, stabilized. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the vehicle off. Okay, so that was the that was the last time we had to cycle it, okay? So <laughs> Um, and I just had to overfill it the last time. So, so um, if I wanted, if I wanted to be, you know, Hades Vega wanted to be perfect, I would get a vacuum pump or a syringe or something and suck out all the extra coolant. All right, you generally you want it at F or maybe just a little bit up, up above the F line. All right, but uh, that's fine. I'm just gonna leave it there and then I'm gonna monitor it. Okay, so uh, so yeah, we're done. Okay, so it says um, if there's a loud noise coming from the water pump, um, that means that there's air in the cooling system. All right, so if if your if your vehicle is making an abnormally loud noise from from what sounds like a water pump, then you probably want to keep on ble doing bleeding the air and refilling it, like I just showed you. So I don't know, just for just to be sure, I'm gonna go fire up the vehicle one more time. Okay. You saw it go down just a little bit because the pump is working. Okay, it looks like it's stabilized. I'm gonna go shut it off. Okay, and so that looks like it. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is take our funnel out. Wipe all the excess coolant in the funnel. And make sure you clean your funnel because it should be clean the next time you use it, right? And then put the cap back on. Okay, you should be able to turn it until it clicks.
Oh, maybe it doesn't click. <laughs> okay, just turn it until it's snug, man. Yeah, it doesn't click like the radio, like the engine one. <laughs> you don't sure I didn't mess up the gasket, okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it'll it'll just stop. Oh, there, oh, there, it just click. <laughs> okay, never mind. I don't know for whatever reason it didn't do it before. All right, it should click, and you should see. Um, you should be able to read the label. Okay, the label should be so you can read it while you're looking at it from the engine bay. Okay. So, got it. <laughs> yeah. So I remember the other one clicked. So this one did click too. Okay. So the last step is to inspect for coolant leaks. All right, that's step five. Uh, just make sure there's no coolant leaking anywhere here. You, that'd be a major problem if you saw anything leaking here, okay? Um, but look down here, all right? Take a peep, all right, where the, uh, where the drain plug is and make sure that's not leaking, all right? It doesn't look like it's leaking to me. All right, and you probably want to inspect that every once in a while. It's not too hard because you've got this hole here in the undercover, so you can, you can look at it straight from here, okay? It doesn't look like it's leaking to me, all right? And we torqued it to the right specification. All right, and then so what I've got to do is put these, put the zip ties I had on there back again, all right? Because it's missing all the fasteners, man. It, this thing just flaps around everywhere, man. Okay, so uh, step six is install the undercover and then install the front spoiler. I didn't take the spoiler off they're talking about. I, I didn't need to, okay? So, okay. So now just clean up, all right? All right. Okay, and so with that, we're done changing the uh, the hybrid inverter coolant All right. on this 2010 Toyota Prius. Okay, uh, it was pretty easy. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. The only the hard part is getting that cover off from the bottom. Okay, <laughs> it's a bit pain in the booty to put it back on because all the all the clips and fasteners have like fallen off on this vehicle. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We're just uh, clean it up, um, take it off the ramps. And then so uh, what you probably want to do is is uh, monitor the coolant level for the next couple times you drive the car. So, you know, after maybe like the next five times you drive the car, take a look at the coolant level. And if it goes down, just top it back up. OK, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure that's pretty good. All right. Um, I think I did a good job. <laughs> and then and then look for leaks underneath the car. All right. So um, so now, now we shouldn't have to do this for another hundred thousand miles. All right. Okay, to be honest, I did not change the, I didn't change the gasket for the drain plug. Um, you can get those at your dealer, all right? Um, my suggestion is if you're only going to do it every 100,000 miles, yeah, go ahead and do it because you don't want that thing to leak, okay? <laughs> but I went ahead and reused it, okay? I think it's fine to reuse it as long as it doesn't leak, right? But if it leaks, then you're going to have to do this all over again, all right? Which just wasn't that hard. Actually, it wasn't really that expensive. I've got about half of this left, okay? Only two quarts, so I got about half left for to top off. Okay, so it's good to have extra because you can top off. If you don't have extra, or if you somehow if you run out, you can use distilled water. Okay, uh, as long as it's not a lot. All right, because you you want the coolant. Right? You want the coolant to be in there. All right, it's not, it's not just water. You got to have that special chemicals in there that help it. You know, keep it from rusting and all that stuff. Okay, um, they're like rust inhibitors and stuff. Okay, so just make sure, and also make sure you torque that plug, all right? I torqued it to 29 foot-pounds, and, uh, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. I think it should take, you probably, if you knew, if you really knew what you were doing and you just blazed through it, probably get this done in half an hour. Uh, a reasonable time to finish, probably be about an hour, because you're clean, I'm ha I had to clean the reservoir and everything, the reservoir was kind of gross looking, all right? I cleaned the cap, I, I cleaned stuff as I went along. Kind of Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this is educational and entertaining. That's how you change your inverter coolant on a 2010 Toyota Prius or a third generation Prius. Okay? I'll have a separate video on how to change your engine coolant. All right, That's a lot more involved than this, All right, but I didn't have to take the cover off. So, <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll put a link to that at the end of the description if you guys wanted to check that video out. All right? Thanks for watching. Thanks for